Guys and girls, boys and ladies, what is going on? We are back with Firewatch. The full game is here. Becca and I are here, and Henry and Delilah are almost here. First, apparently Hank. there's an intro segment. Hank. Henry. Hank. Henry. Hank and Delilah. We learned that Hank is short for Henry because of English. That makes no sense. <laughs> um, but there's an intro segment that we have to play through, so this is kind of like a part negative one or a part one of the part one. It's about a 15 minute segment, so we'll play through that and then pick back up when the magical, mystical something or other destroyed the girl's tent. But first, the intro to the game, save slot one, here we go. We're at a bar, we're at a party. Maybe it's a bathtub. Could oh be. Bathtub? Panic you have a new bathtub. What do I have in my bathtub? Lemonade dispensers. <laughs> Just like in the thing. Okay, it sets the stage. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. A lot of people in the comments commented they were actually from Boulder. Nice. You see Julia. I don't see her. This is a very good way to save on graphics. <laughs> oh, they met in a bar. Remember? Gotcha. That is true. Remember? Are you supposed to click something, you think? Yeah. <laughs> She's about your age, late 20s, laughing and well-dressed, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach That her. ain't Hank. That's Henry. Did I say Hank? No, I'm saying Henry because it's Henry. Oh. You said this was a game about Hank. It's not. It is. You are drunk. Oh gosh, should we ask, tell her she's pretty. I like how we get to like play this scene out. Yeah. Should we ask where her major is? Or I think we should pull a ghost robo and say, "Hey, you're pretty." Okay. <laughs> wow. Ooh. You're what? pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You're a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you all have a boyfriend. Aww. I like the music. Oh, dude, we're in an elevator. Elevator. Give me a break. What is this? Give me a break. Break off this bar so I can sit down. Oh, that's my truck, baby. No wonder Henry got Julia with an orange truck like this. Okay, I have chills. I don't want to get in the truck just yet. Let's go to the dump. Throw ourselves in there. Our life is trapped. What if we just run out? I think we just left our co apartment complex. Yeah. And we're about to go to... I almost said Campo Santo. Um, <laughs> yes, the welcome tower, to Campo Santo. The Wyoming forest. We're going to drive there. Did we ever actually find out the name of the forest? Yeah, it's something. Remember, it's in like the Shalashashka region or something like that. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. No, look at us. <laughs> Stop biting your lips. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with the view of the mountains. You two drink beers on the deck. It's not us. You drink beers about anywhere. It's definitely not us. Life is good. And then Julia wants to get a dog. It's even better. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle German Shepherd. Oh God. Me and Kobe have bad bad times with German Shepherds. They're I nasty have great animals. Times with German Shepherd. That was my first dog. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's a badass. I think you should get the beagle, because she obviously loves the beagle. And Bucket is a better name than Mayhem. We should name our dog Bucket. <laughs> or Bowser. That's my favorite so far. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too? Good. 1979, you talk on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. So we have kids? What do you think about kids? No, what do you oh, think about them? I thought you said, what do you think about the kids? Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying you and I have some, uh, a couple of little idiots. Should we say that if you're really good, or wh why rush? That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. <laughs> so <laughs> optimistic. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Oh. All right, we've arrived. And we're in Wyoming, apparently. At the Thoroughfare Trailhead. This game is even prettier than the last time I saw it, and hopefully the artifacting is fixed. Two Forks is the name, remember the Two Forks region. Ah. Uh, Our tower is the Two Forks tower, and this is the Two Forks region. Better than Shushka Bershaber. Shashashka, <laughs> that's from Metal Gear Solid. You're in their country, bear country. I just saw a trailer for the Jungle Book. Country bears. 
I like that Bill Murray's the voice of, was it Baloo? Is that his name? I like that he's the voice of Baloo. I don't understand why Scarlett Johansson is the voice of Kai. I never thought of Kai as a woman. I think it's dope that she's a woman. Kai is a boy snake. I think it's cool that the snake is kind of like seductive and evil and mysterious. She's moment. seducing an eight-year-old boy. Maybe. She wants Come to eat him. to me. That's what Ka says in the movie. I know. I like that Baloo was like, <laughs> I have to get ready for hibernation. <laughs> He's like, bears don't hibernate. When he goes, no, but I take a lot of naps. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pull of resentment. Why don't you ask her what she did? We're making coffee and going to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Should I pose and flex or frolic? Definitely frolic. Okay. <laughs> Julia's right. You are very, see? <laughs> very pretty. All right. There's my big old cankles. Look at this, man. It is very pretty. Little Slice of Heaven. Did you know that the pictures you take in this game can be printed? We and they're in a package in Photodome. Like, the okay. package is from Photodome, it Sweet. says. We should totally uh, do that. Okay. And then make a collage. Okay. And, and the then... scrapbook that I got you. Oh, sweet. When we went to Two Forks. Two Forks. Lookout Tower. Eight more miles. Holy mackerel. I highly doubt we have to climb the eight miles. That would be like, yeah, sorry about 15 minutes. It's going to be like 50 hours. 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to... Wow. That's not cool. Bia, bia, ba, dog. Um, do we beat him or let's scare him away? Yeah, I mean... You reach in your pocket like you've got a gun threaten to kill him. You manage to scare away. all three of you. He runs away. Julia has to take a different path from the day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. George Orwell attacks. She's about to get sick soon. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets out of her job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut. 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 <laughs> That's what it's called. Connecticut. Conne Connecticut. Connecticut. 2,000 miles away. <laughs> but everyone says Connecticut. But it's really Connecticut. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Do we convince her to take a job or agree if she commutes? Agree if she commutes back and forth. Fine. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. Connecticut. She says that it'll be hard, but she'll do it for you if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Mm. Oh, wow. She has to go there. Yeah. We should have moved. Dang it. We're convincing her to take the job. No, that's Now they're not separate. Fair. What if she wanted that? What if she um, wanted Hank? I mean, obviously she, didn't, obviously she wanted the job. Dang it. Every decision I try to put it, like, what if you and I were in that situation? I'd be like, no, stay with me. I wouldn't want you to, you want to commute, do long distance again? Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She's starting to get sick. Dementia. She's mm. found crying in the stairwell. Make macaroni and drink wine or look no, talk about it. No, talk about it. They're seeing multiple doctors and having many tests. They are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Keep it a secret. Probably she got it in, from Yale. If I would have convinced her to not take that job, probably would have been better. I think she would have gotten sick either way. Ooh, oh my that's, god. Oh my. That is a penis. <laughs> that's a drawing from Julia. <gasps> wow. That's what you get for frolicking like a Victoria's Secret. The bucket is getting older. <laughs> Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. My finger itches. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class, this one. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. It has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She, she sent him a permanent medical, medical leave. Medical Aww. leave? Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 
You spend, spend your days, days following, following Julia around the house. house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility, or you are determined to take care of her by yourself. I think you should move her into a facility. Do you? Can we turn this down? Is that doing anything? No. Okay. <laughs> really? You don't want to be with her? I mean, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, the Daniel comes. Yeah. Daniel-san. He can do the uh, sweep the leg and save her life. This is freaking sad. No wonder he's so sarcastic. <sighs> Dang you, Campo Santos. Making me have the feels already. The Tuesday morning. I didn't want this. Look at the bucking bronco. The bucking buck. The Bucking Bronco. Isn't that... That's from Bioshock Infinite, right? It's also just a saying. But isn't it Bioshock yes, Infinite? It is a, I thought it, it was. Is a vigor. It's yeah. impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. Hmm. Purple elephants. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. So much alcohol, man. You start going out after you put her to bed, and the first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Can we trust that she's going to go rock or put a chair in front of the door? I put a chair in front of the door. And she's going to feel trapped. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow up .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne. It's Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't leave the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia's coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. Mm -hmm. Park Ranger. You take it. Fireman. Firewatch. The whole time I'm going to talk like this. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, you are not. Enter the lookout tower. Okay, so this is where... Henry joins left. Delilah at Two Folk Camp. <laughs> oh, my God. So this is where we left, or we started. Climb the stairs, start the game. Zachary Tyler. Here we go. Julia is sick with our parents in Australia. Ah, uh, don't talk like Henry, that. Henry, <laughs> need some time away. Claire is mine, enters the park. It's not the same voice you started with. <laughs> and this is where the game starts. Was it this boarded up? No, I think... I don't know, but we turn on the power. Everything's the same. It wasn't this boarded up. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hey, it's Delilah. But it wasn't this boarded up. Are you sure? I think yeah. we take the boards down. Are you sure? Yeah. Anyhow, this is where the game starts. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come and in. Thoroughfare and Delilah need to call us, and we are going to get squeegeeing our way, smooth and squeaky, to the next uh, checkpoint, which is a few hours forward. There. Your lights are on. I'm not going to answer it. Why? Because this, we played this. I know, but I think it furthers the game. You can't do anything until you talk to her. I know. I'm just Hello? trying to let them know that we're stopping here. Pick up your radio. Thanks. I really don't think that this is where we started. I don't remember there being boards. Yes, it is. Hello? Whoever this is? This is what happened. It's Henry, right? See, remember? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy This is where the game started, and now we get to continue it. Go back to the tent where the, the magical ghost bear ripped off the girls. Or something yeah. like that. If you missed this part, go check it out in the last three videos. Yeah, part one, part two, and part three. And now meet us back for part four, or part five, part whatever it's going to be. Uh, and we'll get there soon. So until next time, everyone, thanks so much for watching. This game seems sick, and we're going to find out why or what a man does when his wife gets sick. And hopefully there's some weird stuff in the forest it was it was cute <laughs> thanks so much for watching a fantastic day we will see you all later